Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builders Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Hager. This is their part number 551. US 26D. This is a rack and pinion center hung pivot. It's an unusual pivot and even for someone like me who is a door and hardware distributor, we don't sell these often. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean there's anything wrong with the hardware. They're just not really that common. And I think a lot of people, even in the hardware industry, aren't people that are relatively new in the hardware industry. I wouldn't be surprised if they've not yet heard of it. If you've been around long enough, sooner or later you'll encounter one of these rack and pinion center hung pivots. Um, they're very, they're, they're quite unique. I'm not familiar with anyone else who makes a pivot that acts like this, other than Hager. I know that they've made this for several decades. I don't know how many, but several decades to be sure. And this is going to be comprised of a series of components, not a big deal. You're going to have your rack cases. Uh, as far as I can tell, okay, you're going to need to install those in the proper orientation depending on the door swing. The door is not double acting with these, it's just center hung and that's kind of odd because center hung are generally double acting unless you prevent them from being double acting. This is center hung and can never double act because of the rack uh, sort of concept. So you're going to get two of these cases. They're, you know, obviously one has to go on the bottom and the other has to go on the top. You've got to make sure that the orientation of the rack is proper for your door swing. And if they're not, you might have to flip them over, depending on the door hand that you're doing. You might have to flip them around to make them work the way you want. Okay, um, so let's just do a quick visual tour. You've got the two castings. Um, they are... And to go along with that, you might need to change the side of where the, uh, the pinion is. So you're going to want to test the operation before you secure the boxes in place because you might, you might have one trying to, do, you know, to turn in one direction and the other not um, timed correctly. So you'll get a couple of cases. Okay. You're, well, let's take some dimensional properties. And by the way, all the entire 551 weighs about three and a half pounds. Overall uh, width of the case, about inch and five eighths. Its length, it's about three and a quarter. And its height, it's about one inch. They're both the same. The only finish they have this listed in is in a US 2060, which stands for uh, satin chrome. Um, there is the bottom. Well, there are two castings. I have them partially assembled. Uh, these castings are the same, they're identical. There's going to be two pins that are going to come along with them, but first, overall length of the, ar the castings, but the, the top and bottom arms, about 5 inch, about 7 eighths, and about 2 inch. You're going to uh, receive with these two pins. Two pins and four set screws, and a spring actually. So, per the installation instructions, which we're going to go over, you get a short and a long pin. Okay, the part that's machined on both ends—that's the exposed part. The other end is not machined on both ends. Okay, meaning that's the the end machined on both sides, squared off. That's what's got to stick out of the hardware. That's how you'll know you've got it the right orientation. The there's a spring. You're going to insert the spring into the what will become the top arm. That will go in there. We'll drop that in. Little spring-loaded top pin. Very common, uh, uh, very typical when you're looking at um, aluminum storefront. Those top pins are spring-loaded generally. Uh, your bottom pin is, well, it'll look like this, obviously. You'll have set screws that are in here, and that's going to help you during the installation process. I'm just going to tighten them slightly so I don't get a pin that's... Well, 
I was about to say it to get a pin that won't be falling on the floor. Forgive me. Let's try that again. I'm going to, on the top, I'm going to tighten that down so the pin is flush. That spring is inside of there, okay? Um, <clears throat> you're also going to get, you'll get a total of four set screws. You'll, you'll need, uh, you'll need those. So I'm going to insert those into the castings just to get them put in place, just so that they're there. I'm just going to turn them in revelation or so just to a revelation a revolution or so just so that they're not lost you will get a couple of covers you're gonna need the covers we'll show you why you're gonna get some plastic anchors which you may or may not use and along with the plastic anchors they're gonna be all the fasteners fasteners that will allow you to install the castings or the casings down to a uh, you know typical application those those are the longer screws that are there you're gonna have a series of shorter screws depending on whether you're doing wood or metal uh, is what it'll end up being so plenty of machine and wood screws for everything and that uh, other than the installation instructions that covers everything that you'll end up getting so to speak so I think what we'll do at this point is let's talk about where you would end up using this. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Now where you will end up using this or seeing this is in hospitals, patient room, bathroom doors, uh, is where you'll kind of end up seeing this but in an application where you don't need a rescue function meaning you can take that door that swings in and then swing it out this would not this won't function as a rescue operation so you'll see it there even though those applications will generally have the rescue function where you can flip a weighted stop that's contained within the rescue strike you can flip that up and then pull the door up towards you. The restroom door, let's say, will generally swing in. But in this function, you can lift the stop on the rescue strike and then pull the door out in case there is a uh, person who's on the inside of the bathroom and is, for whatever reasons, immobilized. And they are preventing, physically preventing the door from swinging in so that help can be rendered. Um, but those rescue functions are pretty typical. But the, which leads me to where you're going to see this installed is when you have a three foot door or any width door and you have a door that's going to be um, a typical size, about 35 and three quarter. With center hung hardware, you might know that you need to bull nose or radius the door style, depending on if it's single or double acting. With the Hager rack and pinion, you can leave it square edged and that's the heart of the matter you can have a center hung pivot application with a square edge door and that's that's the entire principle of this so if you're familiar with center hung pivots you would you would immediately be familiar with the fact that you need to radius that door put a big curve on it or do a full round over to break the edge well what happens with the Hager rack and pinion is as you start to move, and I've, I've looked at this, you know, I've, I've, <coughs> forgive me, <coughs> I've rendered it in my mind that it actually works. Um, as you start to rotate, you can see, just keep your mind on the vertical axis of pivoting, just that. As I rotate the door, that vertical axis of pivoting is moving like this. It was over here, but now it's over here. 
Hager wants 3 32nd of an inch between the jam and the strike edge and the jam and the pivot style and the underside of the header to the top of the door. 3 32nd of an inch. That's less than an eighth of an inch. I would probably just make it an eighth of an inch just because that's typical. Um, but what happens is the door starts to rotate. The door starts to rotate. And as it rotates... It's actually moving this way, so it's rotating, and my elbow is at vertical axis of pivoting. That's moving through the opening like that. But as you start to rotate the door, by the time you get it open, pushed open just ever so slightly, it's already cleared that hard corner of the jam and can now breach out through the face of the through the face of the jam um, because it's now turned enough to where now you're exposing the inside face of the door to the jam okay so you don't need to radius or round over the door at all because the door is coming closer to the jam but it's moving out very quickly and by the time you move that just a small degree as soon as you start to push on the door, it will have the door out and cleared enough. You know, it'll have the door cleared enough from the jam to where it can continue to open. Uh, and that's how this works. That's why this works. Now, why someone might want this is because you don't want a radius around. So a radius around over is the top row of tile in a bathroom. That's the way that's... a old timer said it to me and it made perfect sense think of the top row of tile in your bathroom that's just that's just uh bull nosed you'll see it in concrete block as well you'll have a bull nosed concrete block you only bull nose when you're single acting if you're if you're double acting well then you need to round over which is basically just two bull noses one on both faces of the door you might have an application where you can't radius or you can't round over um Aesthetically, you're going to see a really big, you know, radius or round over, round a bull nosed treatment to the door. That looks odd because what you're trying to do is to minimize the eye going to an unusual element on the door. So you may not be able to radius or bull nose the edge of the door. Um, the other reason, so. You, you don't want to radius it because of a, a design aesthetic. Number two, you might cause a problem when you are rounding over or radiusing the door with your big round over bit. If you have an architectural wood door or something that's not solid lumber, as you radius that door, you accentuate those different layers, the veneer, the cross banding, and the backer, and possibly the style as you round that over. So you make what you actually expose the supporting wood structure below the veneer when you stain that you're going to see it okay it looks awful it it looks awful if you notice it and it's very likely your client's going to notice that um so you may not be able to do the radius or, or bull nose as a result of the product that you're using. If you're using a solid lumber door like a style and rail, that's just two pieces of four quarter that have been planed and laminated together, it's going to be fine. You can bull nose or radius that, um, but not in a veneered product. So you may not want that at all. Um, it would be a much cleaner, it would be a very clean look to have a bank of doors that just have a 332nd margin around everywhere, and you don't see any hardware. You don't see any hardware at all, and that would be pretty cool. You could even put touch latches. We've got heavy-duty touch latches. Um, I mean, touch latches that are, you know, like $300 touch latches, and they will keep that full-size door closed, so you could have it you can have a, a very beautiful continuous wall of woodwork, but it's all doors. Anyway, so that's where you're going to see this, this Hager item, this rack and pinion. Um, the installation of this, and we're going to peek at the template and the installation instructions real quick, but just to go through a summary situation, that bottom pin is going to go in. 
you're going to you're going to hold it in place with a set screw. You want to hold it in place because you don't want it to rotate at all because you want to be able to fit the pin into the female component of the of the uh, of the pinion so you can get it to fall in there because you're going to have to bring the door to the opening and and tip it in and then tip it forward and I've I've become confident that you can actually approach it this way and get that lined up and continue to tip the door forward and you will have you can see that the bottom pin is not plumb and it will fall in place and become plumb okay um, might be easier to see it from that direction door comes in it's tipped forward you're tipping it straight up 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 and it does fall in place and by the time that door gets into place and falls down you have you're still far enough away from the jam in order for that to happen what's not clear in the installation instructions is how deep of an inset will this installation tolerate um, that is something that is most absolutely going to be very interesting because while it's center hung, it is by no means installed in the center of the jam. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna take a closer look and see if they define that inset at all. I believe the bottom line is, and it may not be called out, but the inset is the face of the jam to the face of the door I believe this will only this will only tolerate up to a specific inset, and my guess is that it's an eighth of an inch or less. You're going to use this type of hardware. You're probably going to be flush with the face of the wall or jam, whatever it is, so that you have that super nice clean look. Um, but we'll we'll study that on the template. I'm looking at it now on this screen, but I don't see any call out to what the inset maximum can be. Anyway, so the installation of the, of the five, 551 is that this is all going to be mortised. It'll be flush to the floor. It'll be mortised up into the header. Okay, You're going to attach your bottom arm. It'll be assembled like this. You'll, you'll have the door mortised. This will be attached to the bottom of the door. This will be mortised and attached to the top of the door. That's held in with the set screw, so the pin is kept flush. And you're basically going, once everything is in place, you'll take that door, you'll tip it in, move it up, rotate the door. Well, you're going to want to get it tipped in place, and you're going to need to rotate the door and bring... Probably what you might want to do is loosen that set screw as you bring it close and then release the set screw so that you can then get the pin to fire up and you're going to have to have it find its location in the uh, pinion. Okay? And that will pop into place and then you're locked in place, so to speak. In order to get that out, you would have to work that pin down in order to service it, to tighten the set screw, to keep it retracted, to get the whole opening out. They don't have any clear direction as to how you do that. And you might be thinking, well, how do I get to the set screws? Well, that's where those snap covers come in. You're going to drill a hole in the edge of the door. And you're going to cover it like that. So you will see these buttons every time that the door is is uh, is operated, depending on the swing. If the reverse bevel, you'll never see the buttons uh, from the pull side. If they're in swing, you'll see it every time you open the door. I would think that you could easily make a you could certainly make a service panel situation. You could absolutely have, you know, some sort of aspect that happens that you know your set screw access is through there. Um, and that's the short version of the installation procedure. Once you get the door tipped up in place, well, actually, it's almost complete. Door is tipped in place. You're, you're secured top and bottom. And what you're going to want to do is uh, set seat the set screws. Now, the undercut can be anywhere from 3 eighths to 1 inch 
pardon me, the clearance can be anywhere from 3 8 to 1 inch. Clearance is the bottom of the door, assuming this is flush to the bottom of the door, and the floor. You set that by, once the door is in place, it's going to be sitting all the way hard at a minimum height of, of 3 8 because if you were to... This pin is all is buried down to the bottom of the casting. When I set this in place and I measure, I measure this dimension, it's 3 8 Well, let's say you need 5 8 Well, you're going to get a door lifter underneath there. You're going to lift that up, but what you're really going to do is these set screws will be loose. The casting will come up from the pin, and you'll tighten that. Except you'll remove one of them you'll drill a three, I think it's three sixteenths, a three sixteenths hole about an eighth of an inch deep into the pin itself and then tighten the set screw again. And that's what's going to lock it in place. Not just set screws against that pin trying to carry the carry the weight of a door. Okay, so you're going to have to modify these pins to get that set screw to sit inside of there a little bit. And that's that's actually how that works. So why don't we switch to the screen view and let's go over the installation instructions and the template. We'll do the template first because you have to machine the door first, right? So let's do that now. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now let's get back to it. Okay, here is the Hager item that we are looking at. Uh, extra heavy duty rack and pinion. Um, Yeah, I, yeah, extra heavy duty. Um, I don't know that I would use that term. You know, uh, the reason is because 180 pounds. I would not call that extra heavy duty, in terms of pivots and door weight. Um, so extended description: inch and three. It's four inch and three quarter thick doors. Can you use a thinner door? Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't. Um, you know, the arm is only about one inch wide, or the castings are, the top and bottom arms. There'd be nothing really preventing you from using a thinner door. Thicker? Yeah, thicker. You could use a thicker door as well, but the problem with that is you're going to need to increase that margin. Um, maximum weight not to exceed 180 pounds. Don't exceed 3 foot wide and 7 foot high. Um, the weight, uh, pardon me, the width has everything to do with how much force is pulling on you know the pivot at the uh, top box itself frame not to have door stop at head and pivot jam so you're going to need a stop an auxiliary stop The term stop has a couple of meanings here. First of all, you're going to need a means to prevent the door from swinging further open than you intend it to. And what I mean by that is you have your... You've got your frame. You have your... That is so pixelated. You've got your door. The issue, though, as your door gets open, you need to make sure that your door is not going to hit your frame. Well, it's actually going to be, it'll be more like this. You've got to make sure that the door doesn't go so far so as it to hit the frame. So you've got to have a means of stopping the, uh, the door in an auxiliary fashion. So you have to have a stop. The other stop that they're talking about is... You've got your door here. Let's say it's going to swing in this direction. You can't have a stop on the frame here. It's not going to work. The door is going to hit it. You can't, for, and for the same reason, you can't have a stop on the header. For the same reason. 
but you have to have one here. You must. This door is going to leave this direction. This will never make contact. A stop over here is going to be a problem. So you're going to need a stop here. It, or something to prevent the door from mo unintentionally moving in that direction. So you're going to need a stop, a means to arrest the door from not going beyond a particular degree of open. And you're going to need a means to arrest the door from swinging in the wrong direction. Consult engineering for doors other than inch and three quarter. Yeah, because they're, they're going to give you a different dimension um, for the gap. I don't know of a way to put this into... Actually, that's not true. No, I could put that in AutoCAD and tell you what that is because what I would do is I would draw my door. I would rotate it around a particular... Um, vertical axis of pivoting, the center of the rotation, and I would change that rotation dimension every sixteenth of an inch. I could then tell you where that would need to be. That would be an interesting um, that would be an interesting exercise to do that. So if you had a two and a quarter inch thick door, I could tell you based on how that door moves through the opening by changing the ro the uh, position of the vertical axis of pivoting as measured from the jam or the edge of the door, I can tell you based on how that vertical axis of pivoting moves laterally, what that 332nd needs to become. And I'll show you that in a moment, the 332nd, based on door thickness. So if it's inch and three quarter, or let's say inch and three eighths, 332nd, according to Hager, works. If you've got a thicker door, it's not gonna work. The door's too thick, it's gonna hit the jam uh, on, in, on both sides. Pivot opens door to 105 degree maximum. These are non-handed. They are concealed. Uh, adjustable alignment. There's no way that these are adjustable vertically at all. You can adjust the undercut, um, or pardon me, the clearance, but there's no way to adjust these. You can adjust it for height slightly, but if you're not true plum level and square, there's no way to adjust that. I mean, short of, there's no way to adjust that. There just, there just isn't, not, not that I'm aware of. Satin chrome. All right, let's look at the, uh, let's look at the template first. Here's the template. This is included in the box. There's a link below this video. Uh, interesting drawing. That's all, just all that that is. It's an interesting drawing gives you some dimensions. That's obviously the uh, head gearbox, they call it. You're in plan view, so you're looking down what you know you can call God view, looking down through the header into the top of the door. Um, so that's what that looks like. Um, okay, very interestingly, there shall, okay, so, th so there's actually an important dimension there. 732nd of an inch. So what that tells us is 332nd of an inch is the dimension that I had mentioned earlier from the jam to the door. So that's 432nd of an inch. That's an eighth of an inch. Um, the dimension is an eighth of an inch from the edge of the door to where the head gearbox will begin for its mortise. You're not going to, I'm sorry, you're, you're not going to measure from the door on that. You'll go from the jam over to where that prep starts. So from the jam here, well, I'm sorry, they're not shut, the, the jam is not drawn here. I know it is, it is drawn. It's, it's, it's this line, that's the jam. It's, it looks odd, but that's the jam. That's going to be, um, from here to here, that's a quarter inch. Oh, pardon me, an eighth of an inch. So you now know where to place the head gearbox from the jam. You know that the vertical axis of pivoting is seven-eighths of an inch from the jam. So you know where, that, where, where the casting has to fit into. That's seven-eighths over. We've got the length and the width 
and the thickness of our arms, our, our castings, quarter inch. They're showing you 332nd here as well. They're telling us 332nd on both sides, which is on the installation instructions. So you know where to prep, you know what size and where to uh, prep the door and the header for your hardware. Uh, the Obviously the bottom gearbox has to be in the same position in the floor because this must be true plumb level and square. It's in the same position in the floor. It, uh, one and a sixteenth deep. You have three and nine thirty seconds long, one and five eighths uh, wide. You know all the dimensions you need for this. It's all here. The only thing they're not telling us clearly is that inset dimension. So back to my scribble scrabble over here. What is the me the dimension from here to here? That for sure is of uh, of importance. I mean, we can infer, infer here that it's flush, but without a dimension, we don't know what it is. We can't be sure. But flush is definitely what they're talking about. Those caps, they're telling you where to locate that three-quarter inch. You'll center it in the door. One inch diameter access hole. They want a counter bore of uh, one and an eighth, sixteenth deep. Uh, and that's because of the nature of the snap cover. You're going to drill a small, you, you can see it here. This is your one inch hole that's going to go, you know, through basically here. It'll go through to here. But then they want a counter bore, which is inch and an eighth, only one sixteenth deep is what that is. Now, if it was me, I would drill with a Forstner bit, the inch and an eighth first, one sixteenth deep, and then I would go through with one inch. Those plastic anchors would go down below here, obviously, should you need those. Well, actually, they're going to go down here. So the only thing we don't know is what's the inset. We're going to, for right now, assume it's a it's, um, you know, flush. Or if it's not flush, very close to flush. The installation instructions, well, this appears to be a lot crammed on here, but giving it one or two reads and you'll be an expert. They're showing, you know, this is nice to see. They're telling you 332nd at the header. Center line of gearbox, same as center line of door. Yes, that vertical axis of pivoting must be true plumb level and square. Assemble top door mount casting with short pin and spring in top of door as shown. So, yeah, what what they're what they're saying there is if you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something, or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. And I wanted to switch that to the um, picture, uh, camera and camera view so I could show you what I was talking about. Um, assemble top door mount casting with short pin and spring in top of door as shown. I've got that spring. I've got the two set screws just kind of put in there. I dropped the spring in, and then with the double-ended machined side, with the, with the single flat side towards my set screws, 
I've got that in, held all the way down, and I'm going to take a set screw and tighten it just so that my pin is held in just like that. That's, that's what they're talking about. Step two, depress pin flush with top of door and tighten set screws slightly to hold the pin down. Check. Assemble bottom door mount casting with long pin in bottom of door as shown. Okay. Check. I've got that installed. I've got the two set screws. The two machine sides are out. That's buried. That's pushed all the way into the casting until it stops. Tighten set screw slightly to hold pin from falling out. Check. Now, step five is set door in place. Well, obviously this is already in position. This is already down in the floor. It's flush. <coughs> so, so sorry. Set door in place. Step five. Set door in place with bottom uh, pin in gear. Adjust desired door clearance from floor. So bringing the door in. Falls into place. This is already installed. Pardon me. This is already installed all up in the top of the door. We have removed that set screw tension so that this springs up and snaps into place up here. So now the door is locked in position, and they're telling you at this point you can get a door lifter. It's a tool, actually, that we sell, and put it under and lift your door up so that you can then adjust where adjust your, your, oh, I'm sorry, what you're adjusting, I had said it earlier, I did it wrong twice. What you're adjusting is how much of the pin is into the casting. So you're adjusting this. Once you've got that placed, you should probably put a block underneath the door. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Set door in place with bottom pin and gear. Adjust desired door clearance. Loosen the set screw. Lift it up. Get it in place. However, they've not snapped the top pivot in place yet. So let's either leave those set screws loose or don't snap or don't, re don't release the captive pin just yet. Step six, align top pin in gear. Release set screws to allow pin to fit in gear. Great, okay. Close door and check alignment. Door open 90 degree and remove one set screw at top and bottom brackets with a three, uh, okay. So what they're saying is your door's in, check it. You've got your set screws at the bottom tight so the door's not moving on you. Once you know that you've got good operation, then Step seven, close door and check alignment. Make sure the door doesn't hit anywhere. That's that's the important part. Open door 90 degree. Remove one set screw at the top and bottom brackets. Top and bottom brackets. With a 3 16 drill, drill 1 8 of an inch deep into the top and bottom pin. Replace the set screws and tighten them firmly so that set screw is now in the pin. Then, through those holes that you've drilled, the 1 inch and an inch and an eighth counter bore, you'll snap your finished covers right into place. Caution, please note, door must have stopped to prevent it from opening more than 100 degrees. We talked about that. Standard application is for inch and three quarter thick doors. For thicker doors, because you've done something, you've added panels, you just have a thicker door, reach out to Hager for that information. If you're buying it from us, and we'll give you that information by running it through AutoCAD, which is, I'm sure, the same thing they'll do. They, they probably have a chart. They've probably been answering that question for decades. Um, door must clear all flooring material, including shag carpeting. What decade do you think these instructions are from? Yeah, well, they've got a revision date of 2008, uh, or a drawing date. Gearboxes on floor may not be mounted on carpeting. Yeah, I mean, carpeting's not a solid surface to attach those to. Then they also show you 
your bottom of the door, 3 8 to 1 inch clearance. Clearance is the dimension from the bottom of the door to the top of the floor, not the bottom of the door to the bottom of the jam. Those two could be the same dimension, but if there's any flooring that's involved after the frame is in, now you're going to think about clearance. Uh, some really nice um, exploded view work that's happening here. Your bottom casing, your long pin. The, the, there is a long and there is a short pin. You'll, you'll figure that out. There, there, one's physically longer. That goes at the bottom. Your casing, oh, pardon me, your casting, your snap cover, what it looks like when it's mortised. I'm assuming that it's to be mortised flush to the top of the door and frame. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, mortising it in deeper would... do nothing other than reduce your minimum clearance requirement. Less than 3 eighths is um, probably not a good idea. No floor is level. Could you cheat that to a quarter inch? Probably. You'd have to adjust everything. So that's the installation instructions on that. So pretty simple and straightforward. Um, the template we talked about, the only thing that's left out there to hang is the inset dimension. I'm going to say it needs to be flush. If it's not flush, it needs to be really close to flush. Even in this sort of isometric view, you know, it, there's nothing that, that tells us that it's not flush. There should, there should be a note here, inset to not exceed uh, X. Now, below this video, as seen here, there's a link to the manufacturer's page, and from here... You can pull up not only all of the Hager products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Let's fire up that document, and then we'll do a find function on our keyboard for 515. I'm sorry, 551. Okay, there's a... 551 ANSI standard, so that's going to come up a few times. Here are our units. Okay, so Hager has pivots, but in terms of these rack and pinion pivots, there's the standard weight, 80 pounds, so quite light duty, residential, 180 pound unit. You can also do it... Um, Something's wrong here. Yeah. Yeah, no, nothing's wrong, but they're not showing us the 512. I wanted to show you the 512. I don't know that it's in the catalog. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay, I just didn't scroll far enough. The 550 would be something more mortised to the floor. The 512 is going to be a jam. Uh, uh, it's going to be a different style of bottom arm, with a surface-mounted application where you can't pierce into the floor. Um, they do have the cam troll double acting rescue set, in the same sort of concept, rack and pinion. That's that release I was talking about earlier, the weighted release. As you ro rotate that counterclockwise and let it go, it'll snap back down. Uh, double uh, uh, rescue strikes are here. They have them with and without the stop. There you go. So that's all in the catalog as well. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Regarding the links to ads that you might see in this video, we do apologize for any interruption to a smooth viewing experience. And hopefully the ads that are being presented to you are related to the base product. And if there is something feel free to click on those and perhaps consider taking a look at what that other advertiser is promoting. Let's get back to the video. Before we wrap up this video, let's take a look at some images that we have of the hardware. Here's the labor, a oh, labor. There is the, uh, I saw cancer and reproductive harm and I thought labor. Uh, there's the label, there's all the contents. Castings or your arms, the 
gearboxes, your screws, your pins, short, long, spring, set screws, caps, cap covers, and your anchors, plastic anchors. They're identical. You just might, you'll have to time them. It'll either be here or here. It'll either be up or down. I guess what we're looking at here is the axis of pivoting, and here it is over here. It's moved over that dimension. Let's take a look at a few more images that we have here. Your castings, they're identical. Your pins, your fasteners and other accessory hardware, and then your installation instructions. Turns out that these aren't the right installation instructions for this. They were in the box. I literally needed to print out from the uh, from our site the proper installation instructions and put them in the box for the client. All right, let's wrap up this video on camera. Okay, so at the end of the day, it's a piece of hardware that you are admittedly you're not going to encounter it very often I do endeavor to have one on hand uh, and indeed a hard a hardware supplier in the state of Georgia had a customer looking for one and we happen to have one on the shelf so that's good for all parties involved um, but stocking more than that is probably atypical and I I don't know if I've got the 550 or the 512 in stock. I might. I'd have to look and see. It's possible that I do. I'm going to slightly assemble this back together just so that the parts are there since I've already taken them out. Now the name Hager is synonymous with builder's hardware. Uh, their, their name is Hager Hinge, but they do a lot more than just hinges uh, and have for many decades. The draw, I think, of Hager to distributors like myself, <clears throat> in terms of the sales rep making a pitch, is that they sell hinges, and they sell closers, and locks, and exit devices, and electrified hardware, and trim and auxiliary hardware, and they sell weather stripping, and they sell sliding hardware as well. These people sell everything for the door and frame, with the exception of the door and frame itself. And that is, that's just the bottom line truth. Um, so, it's attractive from a distributor's perspective because you get everything ordered that you would need for a customer on a single PO. Uh, whether or not that works for you and, and how, you know, if the Hager product line is, is, how, uh, is how you go about supplying your clients is an unrelated concern. Um, but it is awfully convenient to be able to get all that uh, material from a single source. I find that a lot of people are quite loyal to Hager. I've had customers call and say, hey, I need this Hager grade 2 cylindrical cylindrical lever lock. Well, I don't stock that, and Hager's saying the lead time's four weeks, but I've got this. It's the same thing. No, 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 that's okay. Thank you. I'll wait for the Hager item. Very common to hear that, in fact. So, if you have any questions on the 551 uh, rack and pinion center hung pivot or any other Hager product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you very much. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you. Thanks to our clients, Architectural Builder Supply is building an additional facility, and what follows is not only a look at the acreage that we're building the facility on, but also first, the architectural renderings as they exist, or at least the architectural plans as they as they exist at this time. Thank you very much. Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at the architecturals as they exist at this moment, or at least it wouldn't be proper to call these architecturals, but it would be proper to call them renderings in the sense of they're conceptual drawings, they're not renderings. So the entire space is going to look like this in terms of a site rendering. This will be a 22,000 square foot building of which we'll have specific purpose areas. There'll be a workshop down here. This is a few thousand square feet that will be 
uh, likely woodworking, metalworking, CNC, things of that nature. This will be an office area here, a private office area. This will be architectural builders supply uh, expanded storage area where, where we will be able to do fulfillment. The entire space in the center is going to be all of the volume, as I call it. Uh, large components will be able to store, be stored and stocked there. Machinery that's too large to fit otherwise may be put out here. Specific facility rooms and then some recreation over here. Let's take a look at that drone footage and take, thank you very much for taking a look.